it refers to our thoughts, beliefs and ideas about the subject derived from formal and informal sources of information. Okay. So basically it is that part of the attitude that is formed because of rational factors, logic that is derived from formal and informal sources of information. For example, say our attitude towards cleanliness. Cleanliness is a subject. Okay. So attitude towards cleanliness, the cognitive component would be what we know about the importance of cleanliness, about the importance of hygiene. Okay. So it is the rational part or the logical part of the attitude. Okay. Second is the effective component. Okay. Effective component is the extra rational part. It is the emotions that a subject evokes. For example, cleanliness. Okay. So uh, what kind of emotions cleanliness as a subject evokes in us? Okay. Many people have OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Right? They become very anxious if things are dirty around them. Many people do not care. Right? Many people uh, are indifferent. Okay. So what kind of emotions cleanliness as a subject evokes in us? Okay. If we become happy by if things are clean around us, okay, or if we are indifferent, if things are clean around us or not. Okay. So, effective component is the extra rational part, emotional part, sentimental part. Okay, that is subjective. And third is the behavioral component. Behavioral component is the visible form of attitude. Anna? It is the tendency or basically to act in a particular way, to behave in a particular way. Okay. So, it is not necessary that all these three components of attitude move in the same direction or they are consistent with each other. Okay, for example, again cleanliness. Okay, we might have a cognitive component towards cleanliness. That is, we are aware of the importance of cleanliness. Okay, in terms of health and hygiene. Okay, but at the same time, it might not evoke any emotional sense. Okay. Similarly, we might be aware of the importance of cleanliness, but it might not translate into actual behavior. Are you understand? So it is not necessary that all these three components move in the same direction or they are consistent with each other. We might have cognitive component, but we might not have effective or behavioral component. We might have effective component, but we might not have cognitive component. Many people do not, they are not literate, they are not educated. They haven't read about the importance of cleanliness in terms of health and hygiene, but in terms of behavior, they keep their surrounding clean. Okay, so all the three can move in any direction. Behavior is nothing but the visible form of attitude, your behavior. Okay, on the basis of your cognition, on the basis of your emotions, how you act towards a certain subject. Disposition means your behavior. Okay, it is the visible form of attitude. Behavior is the visible form of attitude. Okay? So these are known as the CAB component or the ABC components of attitude. Okay. Now functions of attitude. Next is functions of attitude. First, adjustment function. It helps people attitude helps people to adjust in their to adjust in their personal or professional life to fit in a social or professional group helps people to adjust in their personal or professional life to fit in a social or professional group. Okay, next is ego defensive function. Ego defensive function. It helps individuals to defend their self-image to defend their self-image or justify actions that make them feel guilty
or justify actions that make them feel guilty. Third, value expressive function. Value expressive function. It helps in the expression of core values of a person. It helps in the expression of core values of a person. And last, knowledge function. It facilitates understanding and interpretation of a subject. Understanding and interpretation of a subject. Okay. So these are the four functions of adding. The first function is adjustment function. So yesterday when we were discussing characteristics of attitude, I told you that it, uh, attitude is a dynamic concept. It's, we continuously change our attitude, acquire new attitudes, give up old attitudes, etc. So basically our attitude helps us to adjust in different personal and social and professional settings. Okay. So for instance, when you become say when you join civil services, you become part of a new professional setup, you change your attitude to fit in the civil services because civil services have a different set of values okay hierarchy discipline etc so you change your attitude to fit in that professional setup similarly in personal life okay many of you might have come from outside okay to like study here to prepare for UPSC okay it's a new surrounding for you it's a new social setup for you and then you change your attitude okay to fit in this new social setting so attitude helps us in adjusting in different social and professional groups okay second is ego defensive function ego defensive function basically means that attitude we use our attitude to justify something that makes us feel guilty or to defend our self image or to defend our preconceived notions about something okay for example uh, i know that smoking is bad Still, I smoke. Now, when somebody tells me that smoking is bad, I become defensive. What do I do? I start giving them justification or I start showing them research paper. You see, this research paper says that smoking is not bad. And eating oily food is worse than smoking. Okay? So, basically, I start defending. I know that something is bad. I practice it. It makes me feel guilty. Okay? But just to defend it, just to justify what I am doing, I use my attitude. That is the ego defensive function of attitude. I defend my ego, I defend my preconceived notions about something. Okay. Third is value expressive function. So value expressive function basically we use our attitude for expressing our core values about different subjects. Our mom, for example, uh, moral values, social values, political values, environmental values. Okay, we express or we use these, like we use our attitude to express these values, what are our moral values, for example, our opinion on a political issue, okay, our attitude on a political issue, it is used for the expression of our political value, our attitude towards democracy, our attitude towards authoritarianism, okay, it's an expression of our political value, okay, and finally, knowledge function, the knowledge function is nothing but our attitude, our opinion, our views on different subjects, it basically helps in understanding and interpreting that subject. Okay, that subject could be anything. It could be an individual, it could be an institution, it could be an issue, anything. Okay? Factors affecting formation of attitude. What are the factors that affect formation of attitude? What are the factors that affect formation of values? The 
remember? We discussed factors which affect the value system of an individual. Which are the factors? Things like individual level, family, education, institutions, functions. Individual life experiences, physical awareness, and the ability to apply the same. Then at the ISO level, organization code of conduct. At the macro level, we discussed other social, cultural, religious, political, economic factors. The same set of factors also are the factors that affect the formation of our attitude. So, if the question comes, what are the factors that affect the formation of attitude of the individual? You have to use the same framework. Micro level may these factors affect the formation of your attitude, ISO may these factors, and macro may these factors. Because again, in common language, values, ethics, attitudes, they are used very interchangeably. So same set of factors affect our value system also, our attitude also, our ethical orientation also, how we think, how we act, how we behave. These are the factors that affect. Okay. So depending upon the nature of the question, use the same thing. Okay. Attitude behavior link. Next topic here is attitude. Either on Saturday or Sunday, you will have a test. Okay. You will have two tests. So first test would be either on this Saturday, Sunday. Next test would be next. Okay. So um, yeah, attitude behavior again. So does our attitude always translate into behavior? What are the situations in which our attitude does not translate into behavior? Restriction. Restriction. Okay. And? Self image. Self preserving. Okay. Yes. Anything else?
perfect. When there is no external pressure, and when a person's behavior is not being evaluated by others, when there is no external pressure, and when a person's behavior is not being evaluated by others. Okay, so if this these conditions are present, then attitude behavior then would be strong. Your attitude would actually translate into your behavior if these conditions are present. Okay, attitude behavior then becomes weak because of two factors. Okay, our attitude does not translate into actual behavior because of two factors. First is social facilitation or audience effect. Okay, attitude behavior link becomes weak because of two factors. The first factor is social facilitation of audience effect. It refers to the tendency of the people, social facilitation or audience effect refers to the tendency of the people to act differently in the presence of others. The tendency of the people to act differently in the presence of others. Okay? So, when you know that you are being watched by others, when you are being evaluated by others, when others are present around you, then you change your behavior. You do not show your true attitude many times. Okay? For example, uh, you have heard of the free rider problem.
after this situation. Okay, situation, again, situation is an odd and compassive term, it's a very broad term. And so, for example, you told about restrictions. They can come under situation. So many times we have, an, we have a particular attitude towards a subject, but because of the situation, it does not reflect in our behavior. Okay. For example, we might have an attitude against corruption. Okay, we might have a negative attitude against corruption, like against corruption. But the situation, sometimes the situation is such that we are forced to pay a bribe. And suppose we are getting paid, we have an UPC interview, and the constable has caught us jumping the red line. And you have to reach very urgently, then you forget about all the things that you have read about corruption and you should not pay bribe and this and that. <laughs> then your objective is just to reach as early as possible. So theoretically you have an attitude against corruption, but because of the situation you it does not get reflected in your behavior. Okay. Similarly, caste discrimination. So all of us or many of us know who are who are educated that caste based discrimination is bad, it's not good, it's undesirable. But still we practice it because of social pressure or because of other social cultural factors. Okay. So mostly on social issues or even on political issues our behavior changes. Okay, because of the situation, caste based voting. And all of us know that caste based voting is undesirable in a democracy. But still because of family pressure or whatever it is, okay, you indulge in caste based voting. Dowry. Huh? Again, many people accept dowry saying what? They say that yeah, I don't believe in dowry, but my parents are forcing me to take the dowry. So they blame the situation. Okay. So all these are examples of situations wherein people claim that they have a particular attitude towards something, but it does not get translated, it does not get reflected in their behavior. Okay? So attitude behavior link becomes weak because of two factors, situation and social facilitation. Okay? So if in one formula you have to define the relationship between attitude and behavior, then behavior equals your attitude into situation into social facilitation or audience effect. Okay, so this is basically the formula that defines the attitude behavior link. Behavior equals your attitude into situation into social influence. Clear? So if any question comes on attitude behavior link, give as many examples as possible. And to show that our behavior changes because of situation, our behavior changes because of audience effect. Okay? Next, social influence. I Personal example, you have to use I. I did this in my childhood. I did this when I was in college. Yes. Or we can have any social influence. Very persuasion. Persuasion. Not social influence. Persuasion. Persuasion refers to the process of influencing one's thoughts beliefs, behavior and actions Persuasion refers to the process of influencing one's thoughts beliefs, behaviors and actions. Okay, so when you are trying to persuade somebody, you are trying to 
change their thought, beliefs, behavior, and actions. Social influence. It refers to the process. It refers to the processes. Whereby our thought, behavior, and actions whereby our thought, behavior, and actions are influenced by the real or imagined presence of other people. There are three forms of social influence. Conformity. Compliance. Change your behavior 
so that so as to fit in a group, so as to become part of a social group because of group pressure, because of uh, uh, I mean uh, thinking about what other people will say or what other people will think, it is known as conformity. You are trying to conform to generally accepted conventions and norms of a group or of the society in general. Okay. Compliance is changing your behavior or attitude in response to a request from somebody else, even though there is no norm. Okay, in conformity there are group norms, there are group conventions. In compliance there are no norms or conventions. It's just that somebody else is making a request, a request, and you are changing your behavior. For example, say when a salesperson comes to you to sell his or her product, so he tries to convince you, he, he makes a request to you, okay, and then you change your attitude or behavior accordingly, okay. And obedience is what? When you comply, not with the request, but with the order of a person or institution in authority, okay, when compliance is shown to an order or an instruction by an entity in authority, it could be parents or teachers or police, government, etc., Okay, then that behavior is known as obedience. Okay? Okay. Now this was the theory of attitude, social influence and persuasion. Now the more important part is application. Okay? The application part basically focuses on how to bring about attitudinal change. If you have to change somebody's attitude or somebody's behavior, okay, what are the tools and techniques available to you? Because again, as an administrator, as a public servant, as a civil servant, you will be continuously required to bring about attitudinal change in people around you. Okay, both within the organization as well as outside your organization. For example, say if you are the DM of a district, Okay, you will be required to change the attitude of say people of a village so that they do not defecate in the open and the behavior will change now. Similarly, say if you are the SP of a district, you will be required to take steps so that people change their attitude towards traffic laws so that they do not violate traffic laws. They, uh, like a behavioral change needs to be brought about in people. So as a civil servant, as a public servant, you will be continuously required to do something so that people around you change their attitude and behavior. So what are the options, what are the techniques available to you? Okay. Broadly, other behavioral change or attitudinal change lana hai, if you are talking about behavioral attitudinal change, there are three ways, three broad ways. First is attitudinal or behavioral change through coercion. Then attitudinal or behavioral change through persuasion. And finally, attitudinal or behavioral change through social influence. Okay, these are the three broad means or techniques to bring about attitudinal or behavioral change. Okay. Now let us discuss these three techniques one by one. Attitudinal change through coercion. Attitudinal behavioral change through coercion. So through coercion means use of force, use of threat and intimidation. When somebody uses force, threat or intimidation to bring about attitudinal or behavioral change in others, it is known as Attitudinal change through coercion. Can you think of an example? Not at all. Okay, through laws, when you try to do something through laws. Car panchayats. yes. Okay, that is part of the laws, laws, rules, regulations. Have you read about Treaty of Versailles, World History? Treaty of Versailles, what is Treaty of Versailles? So after the 
First World War after Germany was defeated by Allied powers, Treaty of Versailles was signed between the Allied powers who were victorious and the defeated powers. Okay, Germany, Turkey, etc. Okay, Austria. Uh, treaty of Versailles was a treaty that was signed with Germany. Okay, and the objective of Treaty of Versailles was to use force, threat, and intimidation, basically to intimidate Germany. Okay, to subjugate Germany so that she could never rise again. And ultimately, what happened because of Treaty of Versailles? It gave rise to Nazism. It gave rise to Hitler. Okay, which ultimately led to the Second World War. Okay, when you read world history, you read about these things. Okay. So, Treaty of Versailles is a good example of how attitudinal change through coercion is not sustainable. Again, generally attitudinal change through coercion is not sustainable. Long term attitudinal and behavioral changes cannot be brought about by using force, threat and intimidation. Okay. So, Treaty of Versailles is a very good example to show that when you try to coerce somebody, force somebody to do something, okay, they are not going to do it. Even at an individual level, okay, when somebody forces you to do something, if your parents are forcing you to do something, or if somebody else is forcing you to do something, you develop resistance. Okay, ye to I won't do this. Okay. So, in general, coercive techniques or coercion as a means of attitude and change is not sustainable. It does not bring about long term changes. Okay. You can give examples of prohibition. We have discussed ethics of prohibition. You remember? So so many states have prohibition laws. And basically it's a technique of forcing people not to consume alcohol, but it has not worked anywhere. It has not been effective. Okay. Yeah, people find a way. So I told you that quote now. Human ingenuity is such that it will find ways and means to circumvent the law in the spirit is not willing. If you force somebody to do something, they are not going to do it. Or even if they are going to do it, they are going to do it only in the short term. In the medium to long run, it will not lead to sustainable changes. Another good example is demonetization. You know about demonetization? What happened in demonetization? Yeah, the old 500 and 1000 rupee notes, they ceased to be legal tender. Okay. And basically people were forced to act in a certain way. And they were forced to uh, do certain things. As demonetization succeeded, what was the objective of demonetization? What, why was demonetization introduced? Black money, counterfeit currency, and anything else. Internal Counterfeit currency is internal security. Terrorism, organized crime. Okay, yes. Broadly, there were four objectives. One was to deal with the black money problem. Second was to deal with all these security related issues, you know, terrorism, organized crime, etc., where counterfeit currency was being used. Third is to expand the tax base, and fourth is to promote digitization. Okay. Has, like, have these objectives been achieved? These objectives, state demonetization, okay. have these objectives it's been what? Uh, more than, it would be one year or more than one year? One and a half years. How it is not up to the expectation? Now, as per the recent RBA statistics, 
around 98 to 99% of the money which was circulating earlier, it has come back into the banking system. Are you understanding? Now, if the objective was to earn black money, then that money should not have come into the back of the banking system. The fact that almost the entire money which was being circulated earlier, it has come back, it shows that I mean, it did not have any impact. Okay. Similarly, counterfeit currency. Okay. Recently, there have been so many incidents where so much of counterfeit currency has been seized again. So, even the new currency now has been counterfeited. Like, the terrorists and the criminals have been able to uh, counterfeit the new currency also. Okay. Similarly, tax base, we do not have any evidence at present to show that tax base has increased. Although the Ministry of Finance is claiming that more people are now paying taxes. But again, we will have to wait for a few years to see the actual impact. Digitization, yes. To some extent, digitization has increased. But it was increasing as it is. Even in the absence of demonetization, it would have increased. It's just that because of demonetization, the pace of digitization has slightly increased. Okay? So, whatever has happened in one year, it would have happened in two, three years. But India was on the path, it was already on the path of digitization. Okay. So, again, okay, demonetization, in contemporary times, demonetization is again a good example uh, to show that attitude and change or behavioral change through coercion does not lead to long term sustainable changes. Okay. Are there any situation in which attitudinal change through coercion can be justified? As a generally, it is not acceptable. Generally, it does not bring about long term changes. But are there any situations, circumstances where it can be justified? Some people intentionally violate them. Intentionally violate them. Okay. So the training, uh, training, Sub-techniques. Cognitive group, 
of persuasion, effective route of persuasion and behavioral route of persuasion. So cognitive root may have how what is the cognitive root of persuasion? When you try to bring about attitudinal or behavioral change using cognition, using logical arguments, using rational factors, then it is known as cognitive root persuasion. For example, I am trying to persuade you not to smoke. So I am giving rational logical arguments. I am showing you research papers, I am showing you different uh, uh, sort of studies which show that smoking has a negative impact on health. Okay, so that is when you use cognition, rational factors, logic, etc. Effective root kya hota? When you try to when you try to bring about attitudinal or behavioral change by evoking certain emotions. Okay, emotions such as guilt, fear, pride, happiness. Okay, love. Okay, when you try to change somebody's attitude or behavior by evoking emotions, it is known as effective. Okay. One method to bring about attitudinal change using effective route is classical conditioning. So, when effective route about karte hain, one method to bring about attitudinal change using emotions using effective route is through classical conditioning classical conditioning is used to create it is used to create certain emotional reactions certain emotional reactions by associating certain feelings with the target object. Okay, so in classical conditioning, what do we do? Uh, we associate certain emotional feelings towards a particular subject. A, a particular feeling gets associated towards a target object. For example, commercial advertisements use classical conditioning. Okay, so whenever they are trying to promote a particular product, what, they, what do they do? They associate a certain emotion with that product. And, uh, for example, say, some software in car advertisement, some software, Pepsi, some Coca Cola, etc. What do they show? They are showing that some cricketers are drinking that soft drink and they are having fun. Okay, they are having a good time. Okay. Now, from the perspective of a viewer, I start associating that soft drink with fun. Okay, that emotional reaction gets attached to that product. Are you understand? Okay. So, whenever I will see that soft drink, I will think about that emotion. Even recently, uh, if you have seen that Coca-Cola the ad, where they have like customized products. Uh, now, for different relationships, they have a different Coca-Cola bottle for brother, for friend, for father, for mother. Uh, so, basically, it's again trying to play with the emotions of people. They are trying to evoke certain emotional reactions. That whenever you see that bottle, you will. Start remembering your father, mother, friend, sister, brother, whoever it is. Are you understanding? So generally in commercial advertisements, this classical conditioning, effective root is used. Yeah, they try to evoke certain emotions. In fact, the original experiment of classical conditioning, uh, it took place with a dog. It is known as Pavlov's dog experiment. Okay. So what happened there, that the researchers or the experimenters, uh, they used to give food to a dog. Okay. And whenever food used to come to the dog, the dog started to, the dog used to salivate. Okay. Now what these researchers started doing, that they started ringing a bell before giving food to the dog. So now what happened? 
just because of the ring of the bell, the dog started to salivate, even if food was not given to him. Uh, food was not given to him. Okay. So that ring of the bell became a conditioned stimulus, and that salivation became a conditioned response. Okay. So similarly, in a, like in classical conditioning, also there is a conditioned stimulus and there is a conditioned response. That product is the conditioned stimulus, and the emotion is the conditioned response. Whenever I see that product. A certain emotional reaction will be generated inside. Yeah, this is the effective route to persuasion. And what is the behavioral route? Behavioral route basically deals with providing positive and negative reinforcements. Okay, for a particular attitude or for a particular behavior. Okay. So behavioral route includes giving positive and negative reinforcements in the form of incentives and punishment. That if you show a particular attitude or a behavior, I will give you this incentive. If you don't show it, this would be the punishment that would be given to you. Okay? These are the three sub techniques of persuasion: cognitive route, effective route, and behavioral route. Okay? Now factors affecting effectiveness of persuasion. Factors affecting effectiveness of persuasion. Now there are three sets of factors that affect the effectiveness of persuasion. To what extent uh, persuasion would be effective, successful? It depends on three sets of factors. Factors related to persuader, the entity who is persuading others. Factors related to message. Or communication. Okay, how the message or communication is being drafted, and factors related to audience. And I think just to persuade the nature. Okay, there are three sets of factors. First is factors related to persuader. What are the factors related to persuader? First, the credibility or character of the persuader. Okay, so the effectiveness of persuasion depend, depends on the credibility of the persuader. Okay, if I am trying to persuade you to do something, you might not be persuaded. But if somebody else who is more credible, say Amitabh Bachchan comes here and asks you to do something, you will be more inclined to follow what he is saying. Okay, so credibility character of the persuader matters. Okay, this is why generally celebrities are used for endorsements. Commercial advertisement. So when Virat Kohli is saying you to do something, you will do it. If I say the same thing, you won't give that much importance. Okay. In fact, you can get a case or you can get a question on ethics of celebrity endorsement or celebrity advertising certain products which they themselves do not do not use or celebrities endorsing some objectionable products, you know, tobacco products, alcohol products, etc. You might get a question or case on that. What are the ethical issues involved? Okay, in 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 celebrities advertising products which they themselves do not use, or if they are advertising certain objectionable products. Okay, see because these celebrities they are role models for millions of people. People look up to them, especially youth, children. Okay, so they have a huge impact on the attitude and behavior of others. Okay, in fact, recently. Virat Kohli rejected a multi-color advertisement of a soft drink because he himself does not drink any soft drink. Okay, so again, it's an example of ethical behavior on part of a celebrity because he knew that he has a mass following, and if he if he endorses a soft drink, then people would get influenced by it. So 
He took an ethical stance and decided not to endorse that. Okay. Similarly, using children in advertisements. Nowadays, in a number of advertisements, children are used. Okay. Now, using children in advertisements is problematic because children are not aware of what they are doing. Because they are not aware about the product, about the quality of the product. They are not mature enough to understand the intricacies. Okay. So again, you can get a question on this also. So using children in advertisements, what are the ethical issues involved? Should they be allowed? Should, should it be regulated? Okay. Yeah. So first is character or credibility of the person. Second is physical attributes of the person. So again, the research suggests that people are more likely to be persuaded by good looking persuaders rather than bad looking persuaders. Okay. That's why generally again in advertisements, good looking models are used, good looking female models are used. So people are more likely to be persuaded. Next, in group or out group persuader. In group or out group persuader. In group persuaders are more effective than out group persuaders. Okay. In group persuaders are more effective than out group persuaders. Who are in group? Basically, who are part of that group. And as for example, if you have gone to a village to persuade people to do something, okay, they are more likely to be persuaded by somebody from within the village than somebody from outside the village. And I, that's why when Whenever generally we go to a village, we take the help of local community leader. Because people have more trust in them. Okay. And finally, number of persuaders. Number of persuaders. So higher the number of persuaders, more will be the effectiveness of persuasion. And the people who say that they are on a particular issue, 10 people are trying to persuade somebody, then he or she is more likely to be persuaded. As well as sexual awareness, there are many members who take to the awareness of the Yeah. So again, behavioral change takes time. It goes out many other. Okay. At least people have started talking about it. The fact that you and me are talking about it, this does not used to happen earlier. So it has become part of our public discourse, such Bharat Abhiyan, identification, okay. This, I mean, five years back, this does not used to happen. It wasn't like people did not even discuss it. So at least people are now discussing it, people have become aware of the problem. As far as actual behavioral change is concerned, it will take time. It takes time. On any social issue, on any environmental issue, it takes years, okay, before uh, it becomes part of your attitude and behavior. So, one, two, three, 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 one, two, negative way. For example, I can try to persuade you by saying uh, by saying something in a positive way. For example, that if you do this thing, you will be benefited in this way. If you attend classes, if you study for like this, you will benefit. Or I can say that thing in a negative way also. If you don't do this, you will be negatively affected. Okay. Hmm? Is the portion. That is not persuasion. Here we are talking about persuasion. So while persuading only, I am trying to persuade you, I am not trying to force you to do something, but while persuading only, how am I framing the communication? How am I framing the message in a positive way or in a negative way? Okay, again, depending upon the processing capacity of the audience, messages can be framed in two ways, central route and peripheral route. Messages can be 
frame in two ways using central loop and using peripheral loop. Okay. So central root is used uh, with audience which has a high processing capacity. Okay. High processing capacity means they are very educated, they are aware, okay, they can process information. Okay. In central root, by framing the message again, rational factors, logic, okay, empirical evidence, they are used in the process of persuading the audience. Okay. So again, if the processing capacity of the audience is high, if they are educated, they are literate, they are aware, okay, then central route to persuasion is used. That is, you frame the message on the basis of rational factors, on the basis of logical arguments, empirical evidence, etc. On the other hand, if the processing capacity of the audience is low, if the audience is not that well educated, they are not that well aware, they are ignorant, okay, then Peripheral route is used. So basically, in peripheral route, messages are framed on the basis of extra rational or emotional factors. Okay. For example, uh, celebrities being used for election campaign. And election campaigning a number of celebrities are used. Now, when the celebrity goes for election campaigning, they do not try to argue logically with the people. Okay. Their presence just evokes certain emotions in people. Okay. Now, generally celebrities are used in rural areas, where people, where the processing capacity of the audience is low. So, Mahatma, the audience does not care what is the election manifesto of the party, what the party is going to do. Okay. They do not have that capacity to understand that. What they see? They just see that celebrity endorsing this particular party and therefore they vote for that party because that celebrity had endorsed that party. Okay. So this is basically a peripheral Okay, where you are not using logic or scientific evidence or rational factors, you are using emotions or extra rational factors to bring about attitudinal change or behavioral change. Okay. So there are these like three bits, which is uh, very important. As the, there are these like three bits, how the messages? Okay, uh, they have the emotions and they have the message. So where we uh, can do it? It refers to both types. Okay, so 
if the audience feels that the intention of the persuader is to bring about attitudinal change or behavioral change, then they would resist that change. Are you understanding? When you know that somebody is trying to persuade you to change your attitude or behavior, okay, you will develop resistance. He, he is trying to change my behavior, I am not going to do that. Huh? Even though it is good. Just because it is being externally influenced. So again, what is the perceived intention? On the other hand, if I think that that person is not trying to change my behavior, we are just having a discussion, we are just having a conversation, and in the process, okay, willingly I want to change my behavior. Okay. So what is the perceived intention of the persuader? What do I perceive? What is the intention of the persuader? If I perceive that the persuader is trying to change my attitude or behavior, I might develop a resistance. On the other hand, if I perceive that the persuader is not trying to change my behavior, he or she is just trying to have a conversation, discussion, then I might, I would be more open to attitude or change, behavior or change. Okay. So the perceived intention of the persuader matters. Yeah? So, we have discussed attitudinal change through coercion, through persuasion. Within persuasion, we have discussed three techniques cognitive rule, effective rule, behavioral rule. We have discussed factors that affect the effectiveness of persuasion. Factors related to persuader, factors related to how the message is framed, factors related to the audience. Next, attitudinal change through social influence. Reading your GS knowledge is very important. 
Okay. Com uh, conformity, compliance. Compliance, there are three sub techniques of compliance. Foot in the door technique and door in the face technique. Okay, when you talk of compliance, there are two techniques foot in the door, door in the face. Para, foot in the door. It involves, foot in the door technique involves getting a person to agree to a large request. Getting a person to agree to a large request by first making a modest request. By first making a modest request and gradually increasing the intensity of the request. Gradually increasing the intensity of the request. Next, door in the face technique. Here, the persuader tries to convince the respondent. In door in the face technique, the persuader tries to convince the respondent to comply. By making a large request first, to comply by making a large request first, that the respondent is most likely to turn down. That the respondent is most likely to turn down. Much like a metaphorical slamming of, of a door. Much like a metaphorical slamming of the door in the persuader's face. The respondent is then more likely to agree The respondent is, is then more likely to agree to a second more reasonable request Stop smoking altogether. 
you can gradually first start with you then say nine nine say eight eight say seven it has to be a gradual phased approach okay similarly uh, have you heard of pinkathon 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 ek bada nahi suna pinkathon is a movement uh, started by milan soman you know milan soman हम लोग ना न्यूज पेपर में पढ़ेंगे टीवी नहीं देखेंगे तो कैसे काम चलेगा दुनिया में क्या हो रहा है वो पढ़ने से यूपीएससी नहीं निकलने वाला है है ना मींस कैंसिल हां कैंसिल दे आई इनिशियली स्टार्टेड एज अ मूवमेंट अगेंस्ट एज स्प्रेड अवेयरनेस रिगार्डिंग ब्रेस्ट कैंसर ओके बट स्लोली इट हैज बिकम अ होलिस्टिक हेल्थ मूवमेंट टू प्रमोट होलिस्टिक हेल्थ अमंग वुमेन ओके पिंक एंड फॉन सो एज पार्ट ऑफ पिंक एंड फॉन मिलन सोमन हु इज अ मॉडल इज अ मॉडल एक्टर Okay, he is a fitness freak. So he basically goes to various places and he tries to persuade women to adopt a healthy, active lifestyle. Okay. Now, as part of India, now recently I was at one of the places where he had come, and I saw how he was persuading people, how he was persuading them. Okay. So he gave them small targets. He did ask them to start running marathons. Hey, from tomorrow, start running marathons. Or start doing this, start doing that. He was very reasonable. He gave a small target. Okay, for the next one week, you do just this. Okay, you walk for 500 meters. You walk for one kilometer. Next week, you you brisk to walk for one kilometer. Then you slowly start jogging for half kilometer. Okay, so we made small requests. Okay. Similarly, recently I saw an advertisement. Okay, of Raj Kumar Rao. I'm sure you have heard of Raj Kumar. Okay. He's an actor. Okay. Huh? He was in theatre. Theatre before he is a mainstream actor. Abhi Rajkumar Rao ki movies mein aaya. For a big deal. So many movies. आप लोग ना टीवी देखते हैं ना मूवी देखते हैं पता नहीं क्या करते हैं देखकर. So it's really possible. So it's possible. बिल्कुल possible है. आठ नौ चौबीस घंटे में से आठ घंटे सोना सात घंटे सोना. But TV has to be. Everything is there on the internet. All there are all the TV channels, apps. आपके मोबाइल फोन पर आ जाए। मैं भी नहीं देखता हूँ। सारे apps मैं जितने भी फोन पर देखता हूँ, Indian Idol भी फोन पर देखता हूँ, movie भी Netflix पर देखता हूँ। Everything is there on my phone. There is no need for TV. All these apps, Netflix, Amazon, Prime, they have revolutionized the way, and it has happened so fast. One year back, nobody would have thought this. Nobody would have thought that they can survive without say television. Or Tata Sky or Airtel. Now it is everything that is there on television, whether it be sports, news, music, movies, everything is there on Amazon Prime, Netflix, different TV channels. Have you heard? See, you have to be aware of what is happening around you, है ना? अब लोग अपने room में बैठकर the Hindu के अंदर घुसे रहिएगा, तो it's not going to happen. See, things have changed. You have to be. You have to keep your eyes and ears open. You have to see what developments are taking place around you. These things help in your preparation. I am not asking you to watch movie every day or yet, but at least watch TV debates, discussions. See what is happening around you. Be aware. Okay, it should be part of your schedule. It should be part of your timetable. Watching TV discussions, for TV debate. Again, don't watch every debate. And a political debate, they think there is no use. ठीक है सम इशू बेस डिबेट इफ टेकिंग इज टेकिंग प्लेस ऑन सम न्यूज़ चैनल और ऑन राज्य सभा टीवी और लोक सभा टीवी वॉच दोस थिंग्स सो थोड़ा सा यू नीड टू बी अवेयर ऑफ व्हाट इज हैपनिंग अराउंड यू एनी क्या कह रहा था मैं हां सो रिसेंटली आई सो एन ऑफ एड बाय राज कुमार राव वेयर ही वाज ट्राइंग टू परसुएड पीपल टू चेंज देयर ईटिंग हैबिट्स एंड कि मीठा कम खाइए ईट लेस शुगर नो ही डिड आस्क टू Give up sugar altogether because people are not going to do that. He says that if you have to eat two gulab jamun instead of two gulab jamun, eat one. If you have to eat one instead of one, eat just half. Okay. If you take four teaspoon of sugar every day, then four go two like, two go one like. Are you understand? All these are examples of food to do. See, the examples of the answers we get, they are all the same. They are not in the book. Okay, so examples are like this. You won't get marks. You have to connect these theory, theoretical concepts with whatever is happening around you. I understand. So 
that will show the examiner that you have the analytical skills. You are able to connect. See, ultimately, you have to work in a common environment. All this theory is not going to help you when you are a student, sir. How effectively you are able to link whatever you have learned as part of theory to whatever is happening around you, that is what UPC is trying to test. So, put in the door. Door interface, what is the you make a large request first that you know that the other person is not going to work. Then you make a smaller request. Okay? So basically it's a continuous sort of negotiation that goes on. Okay? So yes, IRK, international affairs of negotiation, so then generally we are saying the first country, India or US, US, North Korea, first US will make a large unreasonable request. North Korea is going to turn it down. Then US will come down, North Korea will come down. Okay? Personal life में ये काम होता है। Can you think of an example in personal life? Spouses के साथ। Okay। Street shopping में भी होता है। बाहर देने के लिए होता है। आप जाएंगे कुछ खरीदने, वो क्या बोलेगा? पांच सौ रुपए। आप बोलेंगे पचास रुपए। फिर वो चार सौ रुपए आएगा, आप हंड्रेड पे आओगे, वो तीन सौ पे आएगा, आप फोर हंड्रेड पे आओगे, तो some middle ground you will find. So that person also knows that 500 I'm not going to accept. But if after 500, if he says 300, then it would be much more acceptable than if he would have started with 300. Are you understand? So again, these are common examples that you have to give in your answers. Okay. Compliance. Then obedience. Obedience, I told you. When compliance is shown to an instruction or an order, then it is called obedience. Right? Obedience is very similar to coercion. You have to add human change to coercion, but obedience is very similar. Because, again, through an order or uh, by you are sort of pressurizing somebody to do something, to obey to something. So, again, all the laws which are framed, which all the citizens have to obey, have to follow, they would come under attitudinal change to obedience. Okay, for example, recently in Maharashtra, a law has been passed. Maharashtra Social Boycott Prevention and Prohibition Act. What is that? Sir, in the community, by course of particular person, you are not included. Not included or according to communication or relations with that particular person. Anything happens like this. Uh, yeah, so basically it, this law has been passed to deal with social boycott of certain individuals or communities which was taking place in Maharashtra. Essentially you have to cast space so you have to go on to any other form of discrimination. Okay. So what was happening is that like panchayats in certain areas they were boycotting say certain families or certain individuals if they do not followed the norms of the panchayat or if there were inter-caste marriages or inter-religion marriages, those families and individuals were being socially boycotted. They were not being allowed to use, say, uh, public places, temples, temples, etc. Okay. So, now initially what did the government try to do? They tried to persuade people not to do this. Okay, this is wrong. Cognitive rule, effective rule, was a kuch, adopt kya. This is kuch fayda nahi. This is kya hua? And finally, they passed the law, Maharashtra Social Boycott Prevention, Prohibition and Repressal Act. Okay. So basically now, people are being forced to change their behavior and attitude. Okay. It's an example of attitude to change to obedience. Okay. And finally, in social influence, apart from conformity, compliance, obedience, there is the last route, which is the observational route to attitude to change. Observational route to attitudinal change. Okay. Observational route is nothing when you change your attitude or behavior observing others, trying to emulate the good qualities of others. Okay. okay. All these are techniques of attitudinal change, behavioral change, coercion. Persuasion, within persuasion, cognitive route, effective route, behavioral route, social influence, within social influence, conformity, compliance, obedience and observation.
Yeah? So again, कहाँ पर कौन सा टेक्निक यूज करना इट विल डिपेंड ऑन द सिचुएशन सो इन मेनी केस स्टडीज केस स्टडी जो भी रिक्वायर टू बिंग अबाउट एटीट्यूड ना चेंज ये वेल सो ऑफ यू हैव टू राइट ऑल दीज टेक्निक्स नाउ परसुएशन एंड गवर्नेंस व्हाट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ परसुएशन इन गवर्नेंस इन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन क्वेश्चन ऑन द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन परसुएशन एंड गवर्नेंस कि परसुएशन का इंपॉर्टेंस क्या है गवर्नेंस नाउ अगेन परसुएशन इज अ वेरी इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल लीडरशिप जैसे इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल लीडरशिप सिमिलरली परसुएशन योर एबिलिटी टू परसुएड अदर्स योर एबिलिटी टू इन्फ्लुएंस अदर्स इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल लीडरशिप The importance of persuasion in governance can be analyzed at two levels: within the organization and outside the organization. Okay? So within the organization, wherever you are working, you will be required to persuade your subordinates, your colleagues, your peers to behave in a certain way. Okay? Persuasion is a very important part of theory by management style. Remember, theory and theory by. Behavioral management style, ethical management style, which is considered to be the ethical management style. Okay. So again, uh, give small examples. Okay. Basically, through persuasion, you are able to win the heart and minds of your subordinates, and you are able to earn their respect, and which will, which basically leads to long-term sustainable behavioral changes. Okay. Outside the organization, what can we do? Persuading to general people, citizens in general, on any issue. Right? So I gave you the example of DM persuading the villagers to change their habit of open defecation, or an SP trying to persuade uh, people of a of a area to follow traffic laws. Okay. So again, outside the organization, persuasion is a very important tool. available to public servants and servants which they have to use on a day to day basis and uh, even the government whenever the government tries to uh, implement some policy or program the first thing that it tries to do is to persuade people to follow that policy and as much bharat abhiyan mein persuasion is over there in fact in such bharat abhiyan there is a very successful example of persuasion There is a campaign called Bahu Bikalo campaign in Bikaner district of Rajasthan. Bahu Bikalo campaign. So as part of Bangko Bihano campaign, what has happened is that the district administration of Bihanir district, the word of Bihanir, Bihanir in Rajasthan. So the district administration of Bihanir district, it has created tollies of children. The okay, tollies of children means groups of children. Okay, and these tollies of children they go around in the village in the morning time. Uh, Trying to find out who all are defecating in the open, and they name and shame them. Okay. So, which technique of persuasion it is? Now, the objective is to bring about attitudinal and behavioral change. Which technique of persuasion? Classical. Effective. Cognitive, effective, and behavioral group. Three. There are three types of persuasion. This is the effective group of persuasion. You are trying to embarrass them. You are trying to reduce guilt in them. So after this Banco Bihano campaign was introduced, incidents of open defecation have reduced considerably in Bihano industry. Okay. So it's a practical, real-life example of how persuasion, effective group of persuasion, has been used to bring about. Behavioral change in governance, in administration. Okay. 
So basically the success of any government policy or program depends on the ability of the government to persuade people to follow that policy or program. Uh, until unless people stop defecating in open or the government is able to persuade people to stop defecating in the open, to stop littering in, in the public, okay, the objectives of such Bharat Abhiyan cannot be achieved. Similarly, government has been persuading to like people to give up their LPG subsidy. Uh, you have heard of LPG subsidy? Uh, the government has been persuading people that uh, if you can pay the market price, please give up your subsidy. And a polio campaign. Polio campaign again, which was led by Amitabh Bachchan. You know about polio campaign? Two boons. Two boons in the So again, it is a very successful example of how a celebrity, again, I told you that credibility of the persuader matters. And a persuasion. So how a celebrity was able to bring about attitudinal or behavioral change in the people. Okay. Similarly, corruption cannot be dealt with in the time there is attitudinal and behavioral change in the people. And all these are examples of importance of persuasion in governance. Okay, that for the success of any public policy, persuading all the stakeholders to change their attitude, to change their behavior is essential. In the time attitudinal or behavioral change takes place through persuasion, long term sustainable changes cannot be Okay. So if a question comes on application of persuasion in governance, analyze at two levels, within the organization, outside the organization. And for both, give examples, current examples, contemporary examples. For example, give Marco the Mako Vikanda example. Yeah. And the final thing that we are going to discuss here is social marketing. Social marketing. It refers to it refers to steps that are taken it refers to steps that are taken to bring about attitudinal or behavioral change. on social issues, steps that are taken to bring about attitudinal or behavioral change in people on social issues. Principles of social marketing. Next is principles of social marketing. First, Take advantage of prior and existing social campaigns. Okay, take advantage of prior and existing social campaigns. Okay, so whenever you are, say, if you are a policy maker, okay, you have to formulate some policy, then you should try to be, learn from like prior and existing campaigns, prior and existing schemes and policies that have succeeded in other parts of the world or in other parts of the country. Okay. For example, uh, the SSG model, SSG model of human empowerment. Okay. Where did it originate? SSG model. Which country? Bangladesh. Okay. By a person called Mohammed Yunus. Grameen Bank. Yeah, Grameen Bank. He founded an organization called Grameen Bank, which started lending to groups or SNGs. Okay. And basically, the model uh, was very successful there, and then other countries such as India also followed the same model. Similarly, um, conditional cash transfer. You have heard of this term, conditional cash transfer? You understand this term? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
is what the criteria is yeah so basically you will get cash if you follow certain conditions in which scheme does india have condition cash transfer in any of the schemes
they are not even aware that there is some problem with their attitude or behavior. Okay. Contemplation phase comprises of those people who are who have become aware that okay, there is some problem with my attitude, there is some problem with my behavior, and they are thinking, they are contemplating to change their attitude or behavior. Okay. Preparation action phase kya hai? Those people who are either preparing or who are acting. Basically, who have action phase mental kar liya. Now they have started to change their attitude or behavior. Okay. And maintenance phase kya hai? If those people who have already changed their attitude and behavior, now the challenge for them is to maintain that change, to sustain that change. Okay. Now, as a policy maker, when you are devising some policy, which people you should target first? Maintenance. Maintenance. Why? Because maybe. Yes. Yes. So because see, as a policy maker, you will have limited resources. You won't be able to, you won't have the resources to target all these people. So the first priority should be given to the people who are in the maintenance phase because they have already changed their attitude or behavior. Now, if you do not provide them adequate resources or facilities, then they will not be able to sustain their behavior. And if they are able to like maintain their behavior, then they would act as a inspiration for others to follow. Okay. For example, again open defecation ka example hai. So one of the reasons why people are not able to maintain their behavior, for example, uh, some people say have changed their behavior. They have stopped defecating in the open. They have they are now using toilets. Okay. But many times they are not able to sustain their changed behavior because of lack of water connection in the toilets. There is no water connection in the toilet. is there but there is no water. So they are not able to sustain their behavior. So again, the first target of such a Bharat Abhyan should be those people who already have toilets. Okay, but they are not able to use that toilet because of some factor. Either lack of water connection or any other reason. Okay. Then preparation, then contemplation, then pre-contemplation. So target people who are most ready for change. Okay. Third. Promote single doable behavior one at a time. Promote single doable behavior. This is basically means put in the door technique. The, if you have to bring about attitudinal change towards a complex issue, you can try to promote single doable behavior one at a time. For example, take the example of sustainable development, our attitude towards sustainable development. Now, if the government wants to create a positive attitude among the people towards sustainable development, there are multiple things that people can do. Okay, for example, we can start with doing simple things. Simple things such as switching off fan, light, air conditioning, etc. that we are not using them. Okay. Switching off our vehicle on red light. Okay. These are simple things that everybody can do. Okay. The next set of things which are a little more difficult is things such as say waste management. And the segregating waste at source. Okay. Asking people, persuading people to segregate organic waste, inorganic waste proper segregation, proper disposal of waste. Using, using public transport. And uh, persuading people, encouraging people to use public transport. Or persuading people, encouraging people to say, install solar panels on their rooftops. Okay, this is a difficult. Third level for IMA, so there are more things that can be done. For example, reducing your carbon footprints by Consuming locally produced products. You understand carbon footprint? What is carbon footprint? What is your carbon footprint as an individual? By 
The amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are taking place because of the consumption of all goods and services that you are consuming. You are wearing this shirt. This shirt to manufacture the name of Kitna, greenhouse gas emit to Ajay. So your carbon footprint for an entire year would be total amount of greenhouse gas emissions that have taken place because of the consumption of goods and services that you have consumed in an entire year. It will include everything, whatever you are consuming, usko produce karne mein, manufacture karne mein, transport karne mein, kitna greenhouse gas emissions what? That is your carbon footprint. Okay. So, one way of reducing your carbon footprint is by consuming locally produced products, locally produced fruits, locally produced vegetables, okay, basically reducing or eliminating your consumption of imported products or products which have been manufactured at a distant place by transportation. transportation. Because if a product has been manufactured at a distant place, more amount of greenhouse gas emissions would take place in the transportation of that product. Now it's a very difficult thing to do. And the, everything that you consume should be locally produced. It's a very difficult thing to do in practice because we, we consume so many things which are imported, which are which have been manufactured in China or US, and, uh, imported fruits, imported clothes, imported this, that. Okay. So it's a very difficult thing to do in practice. Okay. Now if you start, if the government starts asking people to do all these things at one go, they are not going to do anything. And, uh, so the government should, or as a policy maker, you should try to promote single doable behavior one at a time. Yeah? Next, identify and remove barriers to behavioral change. Here the focus is on changing the environment. Here, the focus is on changing the environment. Rather than the individual. Okay. So, this principle is identify and remove barriers to attitude and change. So, basically many times, Individuals want to change their attitude and behavior, but because of the environment, because of the system, they are not able to change it. Okay, for example, take the example of income tax, filing your income tax. Now, earlier, there was a lot of tax evasion. Most of the people did not use to file income taxes. Although many of them wanted to file income taxes. Why? Because the tax administration system was very non-user friendly. In earlier we had manual system of filing taxes. So people had to go to tax offices, there were a number of complicated forms which they had to fill. Okay, so the entire system did not promote uh, sort of people to pay their taxes. Okay. So what did the government do? It changed the environment, it changed the system, it introduced online system of payment of taxes, e-IDR, electronic IDR. Okay. And because of that, after the introduction of electronic IDR, uh, again, tax base has increased considerably. Okay. So it's an example of how the government may have brought about attitudinal or behavioral change by changing the environment, by changing the system. Okay. Next, monetary and non-monetary incentives. Monetary and non-monetary incentives. Okay, so basically here monetary and non-monetary incentives are given for so if you show certain attitude or behavior. Okay, so for example, in many countries, people who use public transport they are given surprise gifts. As a randomly 
पब्लिक ट्रेन में मेट्रो में या बसेस में ऐसे रैंडम ऐसे कुछ गिफ्ट दे दे इट्स अ वे ऑफ इट्स अ सम इट एक्ट्स एज अ सम सॉर्ट ऑफ इंसेंटिव टू चेंज योर एटीट्यूड ओके एंड फाइनली गेट कमिटमेंट्स एंड प्लेजेस इन ग्रुप्स get commitments and pledges in groups okay so other group may if you will take commitment and pledges then because of group pressure that it will change or be able to change to be more and it will be more sustainable also okay so instead of taking commitment from an individual take commitment in groups from an entire village or from an entire art of doing resident welfare association or then societies okay to focus on groups rather than individuals okay see these are all principles of social marketing basically these are the principles that as a policy maker you can follow while devising any public policy especially on social ठीक है तो बहुत बार ऐसे क्वेश्चन आते हैं केसेस आते हैं वेर इन द केस इट इज सेट दैट योर पॉलिसी मेकर यू हैव टू ड्राफ्ट अ पर्टिकुलर पॉलिसी हाउ विल यू ड्राफ्ट द पॉलिसी व्हाट आर द प्रिंसिपल्स यू हैव टू यूज ठीक है दीस प्रिंसिपल्स कैन बी यूज इन दोस क्वेश्चंस ओके ओके नो यू बेसिक क्वेश्चंस देयर वाज अ क्वेश्चन regarding social influence and persuasion how can social influence and persuasion contribute to the success of such bharat abhiyan how can social influence and persuasion contribute to the success of such bharat abhiyan right dekh lenge kya likhenge आपको भी करना क्या है? इसे एग्जांपल ऑफ हाउ फर्स्टिशन कैन बी यूज्ड इन द सक्सेस ऑफ बच्चा भारत में यहाँ पर। फ्रॉम द इंडिविजुअल पर्सपेक्टिव फ्रॉम द गवर्नेंस पर्सपेक्टिव भी चार्ज करेंगे। जनरली फ्रॉम द गवर्नेंस पर्सपेक्टिव। बस बच्चा भारत में यहाँ इस फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ At an individual perspective, also you can write. If you are an uh, if you are an ordinary citizen, how can you use social influence and persuasion to persuade other people to change their attitude? So both levels. This would be an example from the point of view of government. No one else does. Okay, so this may have this example. In addition, you have to use cognitive rule, effective rule, behavioral rule, conformity, compliance, obedience, put in the door technique. These all these things you can use. Okay. There any questions here? Attitude, social influence, persuasion. Any any doubts there? Questions there? Again, see, I told you that these are topics of psychology. Attitude, social influence, persuasion. Whatever theory we have read, that is more than sufficient for the next paper four. Again, attitude itself is a huge topic in psychology. If you start reading about attitude, there is no end to it. And as similar to social influence and persuasion also, do not read too much of theory. Do not read psychology option. Theory, whatever we have read, that is more than sufficient. Just you can, apart from the examples that we have discussed, you can add more examples in your notes. That's it. Okay. Okay. So we'll start with the next topic. We'll take 10 minutes break. We'll meet at 12:55. and then we'll start with ethics in private sector.